Welcome to my first video episode in my series that I call Iceland FAQ. Questions frequently asked of me and other Icelanders about us the Icelanders and Iceland the country. In this first one I want to tackle Icelandic surnames and the question, which I get so commonly, why do all last names in Iceland end with son or dóttir? Let's roll the intro and find out. So why does everybody's last name in Iceland end with son and dóttir? Well, not everybody's does, and I'll mention that a little bit later, but most of us actually have names that end with son or dóttir. My name is Ivar Gunnar son. What we have in Iceland is a patronymical tradition. This is actually not unique to Iceland, which surprises a lot of people that I've talked to, because this used to be the common form, at least in Europe, back in the day, back in the ages, before city communities really developed, where people got more associated with where they came from or what profession they had. But anyway, it was quite common back in the day and still is common throughout areas of Asia and Africa. So it's not just in Iceland. And okay, so how does it work? It's patronymical. It means that we actually only have one true name, which is our given name. I am Ivar. And this actually leads to a very informal system of address in Iceland, or system of address, I guess that's a, the, the appropriate pronunciation. Um, so you would always refer to me as Ivar. Even in a formal situation, I would always be Ivar. And we also don't use title at all. You would never say Mr. Ivar or something, just Ivar. But okay, so how do we then come to the surname? That's actually a derived name which comes from the given name of my father and the fact whether I am a man or a woman. So, my name is Ivar, my father's name is Gunnar. That means I am Ivar Gunnar's son, Ivar, son of Gunnar. My grandfather's name was Olavur, which means that my father is Gunnar Olafsson, son of Olavur. And for women, we use the suffix dóttir, which means daughter, but still relate usually to the father. And then our names will never change over time. So you won't see women adopting the last names of their husbands, for instance, because they'll still be the daughters of their fathers. Let's look at an example. Uh, again, let's just use my family, but I'll make up names for my children, not to, not to uh, broadcast them over the internet. My name is Ivar, son of Gunnar, Ivar Gunnar's son. My father's name is Gunnar, Gunnar Olafsson, because he's the son of Olavur. If I were to have two children, let's say Anna and Ari, Anna would be my daughter, her name would be Anna Ivar's daughter, and my son would be called Ari Ivar's son. Quite simple. Simple, yes, but we can complicate things, of course. Um, traditionally patronymical, it can also be matronymical, so we can also use our mother's name as the kind of foundation for building our last name. Historically, this usually meant that there was some sort of a disconnection with the father or a problem in the relationship with the father, so people identified with their mother instead. But in the modern day of equality, it's becoming more and more common that people choose to just associate their name with their, with their mother. So in my case, because my mother's name is Eppa, I would be Ivar Eppuson. And we can even take this one step further in terms of complexity, because more and more people are also deciding to identify with both mother and father, or father and mother. So I would be Ivar Gunnars og Eppuson, or Ivar Eppu og Gunnarsson. Then again, and I mentioned this earlier, not everybody in Iceland actually has a surname, which is built from the patronymical tradition. According to the Icelandic Statistics Bureau, 3.5% of our population actually have proper, what you would call proper in the rest of the world, last names, which are these family names which get passed down through the generations. Now this number, 3.5%, strikes me a little odd because I'm pretty sure our population consists 10% of immigrants, which I am sure have brought with them their own naming traditions from where they originally came. So I'm assuming the 3.5% relates to Icelanders with Icelandic ancestry. Can we complicate it a little bit more? Yes, we can. In the modern age, again, we are of course now identifying more genders than just men and women, which means that we will have to find terms to use instead of just son and daughter. So I'm not sure how that will work out, but it'll be interesting to see in the, in the coming years. Perhaps we'll use the word part, which means child or actually descendant, uh, because we already use that in the plural form when we refer to siblings. Me and my sister, for instance, we would be Gunnar's bird the children of Gunnar. Uh, and there's actually a side to that. You have, we have specific names for then brothers and sisters. Two sisters would be Gunnar's daughter, the plural of daughter, and two brothers would be Gunnar's sinners, the plural of son. Let me see, let me see, let me see. What else did I want to mention? Yari, yari, yari. Now this system, nice as it is, has its complications and families, for instance, traveling through passport control in other countries have 
through time run into problems where you might have a family of four people, um, none of which shares the same last name. And it's, well, at least provoked interesting conversations, let's say, with customs agents. In closing, just to mention again, we are a very informal society, so please throw all titles and last names out the window when addressing an Icelander. If I were to have a conversation with our president, Guðni Tiho Johannesson, I would not say Mr. Johannesson, I would just say Guðni. Alright, this was my super quick primer on Icelandic last names. I hope I managed to squeeze it within 3-5 to five minute limit, which is what I'm aiming for in these short videos. If you have questions, comments, if you want to correct any mistakes that I made, follow-up questions that you want to ask, please post in the comments below. Please like if you did like, dislike if you didn't, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, I'll see you in the next one, I hope.